Hey guys, what's up? Right here, I have two Xeon E5 2640 V2s. These are 8-core, 16-thread CPUs for the Socket LGA 2011. Yes, these are V2 Xeon E5, so they're not the newest things on the planet, but hey, they still go for about 50 bucks on eBay and are actually pretty decent. But that's not why we're making a video today. We're making a video because I got these two CPUs for free. I picked these up at work from a pile of e-waste. Yes, these two CPUs were basically just sitting in a dead motherboard in a pile of printer parts and keyboards and other stuff that was destined for recycling. Now, I was told that these are broken and there is no fixing them and that's why they were going to recycling, but I still picked them up because, hey, free CPUs. Even if they are broken, they're still pretty cool. But in today's video, we're going to see if we can actually, well, get one of these working, or both, hopefully. Uh, and uh, we're also going to see if we can uh, maybe fix one of them if they're broken. Now, I'm going to say this right now. Fixing a CPU is very unlikely. When they break, they break pretty hard. It's not like a graphics card where you can just repaste it or something and have it work or clean it up or, or anything like that. These are, you know, when CPUs die, they're basically dead. But I want to see if maybe there's something wrong with them that we can see physically and perhaps fix. So in order to test these CPUs, we need a motherboard with the socket LGA 2011. Not LGA 2011-3, that's a different socket entirely. Thankfully, I recently picked up this. This is the Jinkin you something. This is the name I can't read. Motherboard gaming exclusive as solid as a rock excellence performance motherboard. I picked this board up on eBay for like $70, which isn't the greatest deal on the planet, but I mean for X79, which it claims to be, although I don't fully believe it's X79, not the C variant of that. It's actually not a bad deal. All right, and here it is. This motherboard is, well, nothing really special. It's just, it's got a single socket. I would have liked to get a dual socket board for these CPUs, but I couldn't find any. And I do want to see if they're actually working first, because if one of them doesn't work, a dual socket board would be kind of a pain. Now, besides the weird form factor, this board actually has another really interesting feature to it, especially considering it's a pretty old and X79, again in quotes, motherboard. This board, as many of you probably already noticed, has an M.2 slot. X79 technically supported NVMe SSDs, to my knowledge, but they were basically, people had to mod them half the time to get it to actually support NVMe and stuff like that, so I don't even know. The eBay seller page did claim that this board supports NVMe SSDs, so I'll have to test that today. So, all I'm gonna do is, well, slot in one of these Xeons into this board. So I have one here, it's got thermal paste on it already. So I'll, just, I'll use that. So this is one of the Xeon E5 2640V2s. And uh, we're just going to basically install it in this, these weird sockets. Now, this video could be, and probably will be, very anticlimactic because the, both these CPUs could just be straight up broken. Next thing I want to get to is RAM. So we do have uh, just 16 gigs of some basic DDR3. Now this board does have four RAM slots and I believe this CPU and motherboard, although they are different colors, does support quad channel memory, but we definitely do not need that today. So I'm just going to pop in. There we go. Now let's get our SSD. So for our storage today, we just have this Asgard SSD. Much like this board, it is just some random Chinese brand, but I found it so funny that I already had this NVMe SSD and it matches the board coloring like perfectly. So I'm definitely going to be installing that in this board's uh, M.2 slot. And just like that, we have most of our motherboard complete. Now I'm not putting this in a case or anything, so I'm gonna leave it on top of the motherboard box while I install my cooler next. So for our cooler today, I have one of my only LGA 2011 specific CPU coolers, and that's uh, this thing. This is actually an Intel stock liquid cooler, which was actually designed for LGA 2011. Now, of course, it has Asetek standard mounting because it was made by Asetek, so it can be used with a various amount of different CPUs and motherboards, including Ryzen, even though it's an Intel stock cooler. But for today's video, we're just going to be using it for its intended purpose. And there we go, that's mounted. Let's connect our pump and fan header. And there we go, just like that, we have our board basically complete. All right, next we're gonna need our power supply. So for today's little build, I'm actually gonna go with this. This 
is a Corsair SF600 80 plus platinum PSU. I picked this up for like 80 bucks from somebody. So that's a pretty decent deal. It's the only reason I'm bringing it is because it's the only uh, SFX PSU I have that's currently not in a system and it was just sitting around. So it's small and it's easy to bring to the location I'm currently at. So let's just get that installed. All right, we've got our power supply all hooked up and our uh, final step is just to get our graphics card. Should I go with the Q-Pet or the Titan? Titan. So we're going with this. The RX 580 2048 SP cute pet. So we're gonna go ahead and install that and just like that we have our entire motherboard complete. Now I've done a lot of setting up for a CPU that is probably broken so I'm just really hoping that it's just working and that maybe the motherboard or RAM in the system that these were taken out of was not working although I highly doubt that. Alright guys so I hooked up this keyboard and mouse so I'm gonna try to get into the BIOS which is usually delete and F2 so hopefully they work for this board but um alright let's uh, turn this thing on. Let's see, the TV's over here, I'll show if it turns on. Yeah. I, uh, I don't think this is going to work anytime soon. Yeah, we don't even have lights on our drive. I definitely think this uh, CPU might be broken. All around me are familiar face. Make sure this is fully mounted. I'm gonna try one more time because sometimes it's just you get a bad boot. Do we have like a postcode readout or something? Alright, I'm going to try giving my RAM a receipt. I'll oh, again. I believe I am more hopeful for the CPU success than I should be. I wonder if this HDMI is just not working. <sighs> I don't think this one's gonna work. Maybe the other one will, or maybe it needed like a reseed or something. But let's get this Intel cooler off here and let's try the other Xeon. All right, guys, let's see if we get better luck with our other Xeon E5. I am less hopeful than I was before. Let's try a different one. Just try this two gig stick of G skill, old G skill that I have. I brought extra RAM just in case. You know what they say, lads? Always bring two separate graphics cards. <sighs> Stop! Stop! I, I'm so mad right now. It's not dissipating. There's one click. I'm not gonna get a second. All right, guys, moment of truth. Uh, maybe my card was just broken, but okay. I brought a Titan just in case, because why not? Come on, BIOS. Give me a BIOS. Oh, wait. It flashed for a sec. That usually means something. Yes! <laughs> that is the grossest BIOS I've seen in a while, although it's just stock, Two, 2048 megabytes of DR3, sick. But that is, that's a BIOS. Intel Xeon CPU E5 2640V2 at two gigahertz. Yes! Max CPU speed, two, 2000 megahertz. I think the boost clock is like 2.4 or something. I, I don't think that's right, but hey, we got a CPU. Does this thing support overclocking? Alright guys, let's go through this BIOS for a second. I'm a little excited. Let's go through this BIOS. Normally, 
There would be something for our M.2, nothing there. Southbridge. That's Northbridge, yeah. So you can tell this board's BIOS is extremely old because it has Northbridge. Motherboards haven't had Northbridge even like years before this. They didn't have them. But uh, I can see what they mean. It's, it, this is usually where uh, like memory, that's Northbridge used, used to be where the memory controller and stuff was. So I guess that makes sense. So let's see if our drive is recognized. So if we go to our boot options, PETA SM. I have no idea what that means. So it's not there. That's not good. So I, I'm wondering if the M.2 slot is just a phony or if it takes SATA drives only. But that would be stupid. It says NVMe and it, whatever. So, oh, wait, hold on. Yeah. Boot override Asgard AN256 NVMe M.2 slash 80. That is our NVMe. I don't know why it doesn't come up as a boot device port. Can we boot to it? Oh, hell yeah. Okay, so the, the M.2 slot does actually work on this board. This is turning into a, a video more about this board, too. I wonder if this other 2640 actually works. I haven't tested it uh, now that we realize that the graphics card is the problem. I don't think the graphics card itself is broken. I just think it doesn't like this board, which kind of happens very rarely. It's only with older boards and, and like weird Chinese stuff like this that it happens, but uh, I should probably test this one as well. Um, yeah, 2 gigs of RAM is not going to do great, but let's just let's see. Yeah, memory, 98% doing nothing. That's all of our memory gone. But, okay, next, 2640v2. At, yeah, there we go. Above 2 gigahertz, 2.2. I can go higher. That's, uh, that's great. 8 cores, 16 threads, 2.3 gigahertz. Wow. Alright, let's try the other one again. Because, um... Maybe it works. I'm gonna shut down real quick. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna install uh, this other Xeon E5 real quick, and then I will. Uh, I'm also gonna change out the memory. Let's get 16 gigs in here. All right, guys. So we have our 16 gigs of DDR3 back in, and the other 2640v3. I do have some games on this drive, so if it works, I kind of want to test like GTA. So uh, moment of truth. Maybe this one is just broken and the other one actually works. Are we just not gonna boot it at all? Oh, I turned it off, I'm an idiot. Because I did boot override and didn't set the actual boot device to it, it won't auto boot to it. Yeah, there we go. Oh, wait, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I didn't know I wasn't paying attention. Oh my God. Yep, oh, now we have 16 gigs of DR3, there we go. And CPU configuration, this is Xeon E5 2640V2 at 2 gigahertz. Wow. Wow. <laughs> you go for like 50, you know, on the low end, like 30 to 50 bucks on eBay. That's like $100 in CPU that I just you know, I saved from recycling. The next step is to get a dual socket board and try with that because this board is actually destined for a different CPU and a different video that I'm super excited for. So it's anticlimactic for a different reason is that they both just kind of, well, worked. All right, I've actually just gotten in GTA 5. I've logged in. I've finally loaded in. And we have our MSI at the top left. It's not exactly, um, you know, I haven't named anything or moved anything around. It's just default. I just downloaded it right now. Now, this is at ultra settings. Uh, that's just what it defaulted to. And we're currently getting about 40 FPS. I guess that makes about sense for a 2300 megahertz CPU, but I feel like it should be better. Let's see, if there is there a setting, because these are pretty slow cores, I bet we can get more FPS if we just turn down a setting or two. You need to restart the game to change the grass quality. Yeah, we're, so we're hitting about 60 at some points. It's actually very, well, varied. It's anywhere from 40 to 70 FPS, which is, again, pretty impressive for a CPU that I, is like 9 years old now. Um, it's actually running really well. Yep, there we go, back up at 60 FPS, just driving through here. This is rather impressive. That's has a point. Um, I'm actually probably just going to play a little bit of GTA 5 because it's I'm having fun. Oop, I have died. Well, oh, almost. Don't kill me, 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 don't kill me. No. Stop it. Oh, yes. Car. Save me. Yes. Thank you. Goodbye.
Okay, 80 FPS. All right, so, I mean, yeah, we got up to about 60 FPS at some points. Um, I think it can do better. I think the settings in GTA, I just, I haven't tuned them. They're all just ultra because of this graphics card. That's really it. Both of these Xeons ended up actually working, which is pretty amazing considering, again, I got them for free from a recycling pile. And uh, that's great. So this actually could end up making a good little, you know, eight core system, maybe for like, I don't know, recording or something. Who knows? But that's besides the point. I hope you guys kind of enjoyed my little video, my little testing of these CPUs and a little bit of gameplay. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys kind of enjoyed. I love you guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.